Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, everybody. We're back. Welcome to the Cube. This is the production that we have at the Cube of IBM Edge. This is our third year doing Edge. First year was in Orlando. Second year in Vegas. We're back in Vegas. Great venue. Uh, 5,000 people here. Tom Rosamilia is here. Tom is the senior vice president of STG. Tom, welcome back to the Cube. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Dave. I remember doing this last year with you. So yeah. So as I was saying, the the progression of Edge continues. It's it's growing nicely. Uh, a lot of practitioners, good buzz at the Sands. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. I, I, I must say, you know, when I said in the main tent and infrastructure matters and, and, uh, and when I said no matter what we do to R&D, you still need to run software on hardware, you know, everybody clapped. And so it was, it was kind of a, a refreshing feeling that people realized that no matter how much R&D we come up with, you still got to run it somewhere. You know, whether it's on-prem, off-prem, private cloud, public cloud, whatever it is, it's still running on something, you know? So, and that matters. You, you worry about your uh, qualities of service, you worry about whatever it is you're, you're contracting to get, right? So now at the same time, you've got all kinds of changes going on in the business, right? Yeah. All kinds of pressures. Yeah, one you or two. Public cloud, you got software defined, you got big data cloud, mobile, social. How is that changing sort of IBM's direction, its strategy, and how you as the leader uh, allocate resources? Well, I don't know if you remember this, Dave, but a year ago, uh, I was just, uh, just had been named in this role, and I'd spent the year prior doing strategy for IBM, yep. basically head of strategy. Taking over for Ginny, right? <laughs> uh, she, she What's did, next? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, not that. Um, but, but, you know, we really fundamentally changed our, our whole uh, a way of looking at the world, and I did it anyway. I, I call it the prairie dog role, where I got to really look around and see what was happening with mobile, with social, with analytics and the cloud. Changed my whole perspective on it, and, and we really, not that I did it, but we collectively have changed our whole agenda around cloud analytics, mobile, and social. And, and in each one of those areas, there's, you know, we've gone deep. And I, I won't try to cover the whole breadth of IBM, but you know, if you look at cloud and the number of engagements that we and SDG did, Last year's 5,000 engagements around, around private and, and hybrid. And hybrid is a very exciting topic for me because it's the, it's the intersection of these systems of engagement and these systems of record. So all the stuff you do on your mobile device, you know, if it's, if it's really serious business, it's going to end up somewhere and it's going to get connected to somewhere. We got, you know, 90% of our mainframe clients are saying that they're seeing the effects of mobile on their business because it's driving more transactions, driving more queries. You know, people look stuff up because they can or they take pictures of the check and they send it in to the bank, so now all of a sudden it becomes six transactions instead of a, a batch job to, you know, to run there. So you know, for us, cloud is, is all about getting utilization rates up for people so that you can, you can benefit from the hardware and the software you already bought. You look at analytics and what we've done to the portfolio, um, it's pr fairly dramatic changes around analytics in the STG portfolio. You look at what we've done with power, uh, we built Power 8 from the ground up just for the big data solution. I mean, it had always been good at analytics, but really, really designed for big data. You talked in your keynote about economics, and you said the driver for a lot of this cloud stuff really isn't economics. That's not the starting point. It's, it's agility. At the same time, you know, economics matters, so as the infrastructure matters. So, I have a question for you. Is rental always going to be more expensive than owning? It really depends what you're doing, and, and when I, 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 I didn't, let me just correct one thing. I didn't say it, wasn't, it started with economics and now it's about agility. I should have said it started about th people thinking it was going to be less expensive and then it became about agility. So yeah, okay. it's always about economics. Everything's always about economics. So for, for me it was about, and, and the economics are positive for cloud in the agility space, in, in, the, in the speed with which you can get started, you can get up and running, you don't need to build a data center. If you're a startup, you know, the first thing you do is you pull out your credit card and hopefully come to us with SoftLayer, but you go to you know, competition, you can get up and running very, very quickly. Uh, so, so the rental model or the, or the OPEX model versus the capital expenditure has been you know, really good for the, for the industry in terms of giving people capacity when they need it, as they need it. And so I think that's what's really fundamentally changed. It's not, at, at the end of the day, if I've got an up and running system, it's not clear to me and, and the data that I referred to this morning and the analyst, financial analysts in the industry are, are, uh, and the financial analysts are saying, if you go here to save money, don't do it. 
go here for the speed, for the flexibility that you can get, for the experience that you can get, for the acquisition experience you can get. If you're doing this purely about saving money, you may you'd be very surprised that you're not going to save money. Everybody throws around that race to zero. Stu and I talk about it, John Furrier as well on the cloud. Why is the cloud not a race to zero? I, I, for, first off, for us in IBM, it's a great way, for, uh, and now I'll speak at the IBM level, it's a great way for us to reach clients we don't reach today. So if, if you look at our SoftLayer acquisition and you see some of the, some of the uh, name clients who are running on SoftLayer, it's the Yelps, it's the, I mean, it, it's, it, it's in, incredible numbers. If you look at your iPhone or your Android device, half the applications on there are hosted on SoftLayer. So, this is not a substitution. These are people that weren't our clients before. So if you look at what we're doing with Bluemix at the, at the middleware, at the platform as a service layer, there's a whole world out there of customers who can now try and buy software that may never have gotten called on by a sales rep. So to me, it's, it's, a, it's an expansion, not a substitution for our business. And that's why we're very excited. It's why it's not a race to zero. Then when you get into the in, into places where you're betting your business on something, you're going to want to know that that hardware and that software and the systems management and the security and all the things that go along with it are are superb. Otherwise, you know your customers are one swipe away from saying I'll go somewhere else. So, you know, whatever it is, whether it's streaming this or purchasing that or you know all the number the number of people who are making acquisitions from their mobile devices or moving money in their 401k on their mobile devices, I need to know that stuff is secure. They'll pay for that value. They'll pay for that value because they know that, 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 that if they don't, as a company, if I don't provide you an outstanding experience, you're going to go somewhere else. Right. So, you know, one of the things we've done, again, it's not my area, but mobile first, is, is about designing things for these devices, not designing it for a, for a browser and then trying to port it. You, you spend all your time doing this and that and this, and you, you know, you can tell it was a browser-based answer that now I call it my mobile app, versus it, you know, something that takes advantage of the smarts that are in those devices. So, so Tom, you know, if we talk about the, you know, the big trends in the, in the industry right now, you know, cloud, mobile, social, it, it's mostly about the modernization of applications and infrastructure serves that up. So you know, if, if, you know I was at OpenStack last week um, and if you'd ask most of the people there, does infrastructure matter? They're like, you know, oh no, we're going to you know, standardize it and you know, just give you some APIs and you know, do, do open source. Um, so you know, what, what do you say to all those people that say it, you know, it's, the application drives everything? I mean, IBM's got a huge portfolio of you know, big data and you know, analytics and, and mobile that they're doing out there. So you know, how much does you know, infrastructure really matter? So first off, uh, it's interesting that you say that. We, we've got a lot of people, probably the most in the industry, contributing to OpenStack. So we're big supporters of OpenStack. Um, OpenStack, by the way, is infrastructure. So, so you know, if they say it doesn't matter, they're saying I don't matter. We don't matter, uh, uh, which boggles my mind because what what they're doing is doing it in a open and a standard way. <laughs> but everybody who's embracing OpenStack is delivering infrastructure. It matters when it breaks. <laughs> it matters when it breaks. <laughs> matters when it, so I would I would debate that they're that, you know what they're doing is not infrastructure. It's absolutely infrastructure. Systems management, right? Yeah. No. I, yeah. I, I don't I, just I, mean I, hardware when I talk about infrastructure. It's right. the hardware and it's the governance of that hardware. The security that goes along with it, you know, provisioning right. of it, use of it. Much more than just hardware. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. We saw Ginny last week on uh, CNBC before the financial Me analyst too. meeting. Right, she looked good, very confident, poised, uh, and comfortable with where IBM was at. Our whole company stopped, we said, oh, Ginny's on. Everybody kind of gathered around and watched and listened, listened to her words. Um, she's also, I imagine, very demanding, uh, just observing. Uh, and big part of her business is, is your business. So I wonder if you could talk about some of the things that are in your control. I mean, some things are out of your control, but some things are in your control. You got a new you know, line of you know, storage portfolio. Obviously, you know, you're STG, so it's a little higher level than just storage, but you know, refresh the line, the whole software defined mean. What kinds of things are in your control? And talk about your business and what you expect going forward. So, like most business people, you have, you know, you have a fixed set of, of, of monies you can spend and a fixed number of people that you have. And, and the biggest decision we make every day is how do we deploy the people? What are, what are the priorities that we're going to call? What are they going to be working on? And so we've recast our entire business in a, in a uh, cloud analytics, mobile, social vein to say, what does STG mean for, for, for those spaces, right? So we've got people working on those things because they're such important businesses for us. So we've called plays, we've enabled teams, we've actually changed our messages for it, for, uh, not just for the marketplace, but for internals to say, here's what we're doing, here's why infrastructure matters for cloud, for analytics, for mobile, for social. All of those things are decisions that I make to, to transform this business. And you're right, there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of things undergoing change. 
you know, mainframe for me is a cyclical business, as we've declared, as Ginny has declared. You know, it goes. I'm never as good as my great-looking quarters. I'm never as bad as my bad quarters. But you know, that thing just comes and goes. And, and there's so many people. You know, Western civilization still runs on that. So stuff, the so, so the so the, the the downturns are reversible. Uh, right? Is that what you're, you're well, saying? Well, actually or? what I'm saying is that, the, that what we look at as an industry, and there's no other way to do this, I'm not suggesting it's wrong, is we look at the quarterly hardware revenue. But that doesn't say whether people are, you know, when I grew 70% one of my quarters and when I was just running the mainframe, I didn't grow 70% meaning that I had 70% more customers or that there was 70% more capacity up there. Cycles. They were, they were cycling through. So you couldn't actually tell what's, what's happening to the install base. It's really the install base that you worry about. Is it saying, are they, are they still using my stuff? This quarter they don't happen to buy new stuff, but they still have my stuff. So th there's a big difference between the quarterly hardware revenue and what, what that does to the install base. And we have grown the MIPS install base out there. We have grown the, the power install base out there. We've grown, I mean, storage is growing like 35% uh, you know, in, in just gigabytes. So the industry is consolidating, but the install base is not consolidating? Is that what I'm hearing? We don't see the, I'm, the, I'm saying the, the install base is not going away. Mm. You know, they, they, we, we deliver them you know, the, the, one of my challenges, we deliver them outstanding price performance, which is great for them. Year but after it, year after but year. It, but it makes it hard for me to grow <laughs> revenue when I'm saying, you know, the stuff now comes at, you know, twice the capacity at half the price, or that, you know, it's all, you do the math and you go, man, I got to, you know, that's a lot to sell. So, so the price performance that we deliver and the combination of just the sh sheer speed, optimization we're doing with our software, and then raising the utilization rates. L look at the utilization rate. Average server utilization in the industry is what, 10 to 15 according to the McKinsey data? We got customers running 60, 70, 80. Mainframe customers running 90, 95. I mean, these people are getting the most out of that you know, capacity that they bought. That's a hardware, software, and actually a labor statement because I'm maximizing you know, what I have. So I'm selling into that. Right, so that, they're not going away, they're just not necessarily needing as much more as would take to grow my revenue. That's, that's my... Uh, now my you challenge. guys, you're embracing software defined, you're embracing open source. A lot of people would say, conventional wisdom would say, Tom, what are you guys out of your mind? You, you're going to put everything on commodity, you're going to go software defined, you're going to go open source, how are you going to make any money? What would you say to that? So I, I, t t for us, open source is really a, a development model, not a sales model. It's not, it's not about you know, selling open source for us. It's about embracing it, clothing it, and delivering it uh, with increased value, increased testing, so quality assurance that goes into that, you know, the performance tuning that goes into that, the support that goes into that. So it's not open source or make money. It's, it, for us, it's about, that's why we contribute so much to open source. But you, you talk about, you know, storage, and, and since that's one of our focus areas here, I'll, I'll, I'll try to end with that. You know, there's a lot of disruptions going on in the storage space right now, and I'm good with that. You know, software defined is a huge disruptive play because it says that I can, you know, I can use commodity-based hardware and, and make it up in, in the software, the infrastructure software that rides on top. Not, not application software, the infrastructure software that says I can figure out how to recover from failure so if, if I have older disks that are going to fail, I can keep going. So software defined allows me infinite scale at up to 90% lower cost. That's a pretty attractive value proposition for a client. If you look at Flash, and, and what it's doing to the industry. There, it's not price per gigabyte or price per terabyte, it's price per what I need. It's, you know, and I need far less flash than I do spinning disk. I don't have to underfill it, I could, I could fill it almost all the way up, and the performance I get is dramatic. So that's a game changer in the industry. I'm good with that. And what we're doing around power with Open Power and the consortium with now 31 members of the, of the consortium, I'm good with that. I think that's a wonderful move for us. Well, we heard uh, one of your customers on stage talking about a two order of magnitude improvement. I tweeted out, there's got to be some flash in there somewhere. Um, but I learned in Boston last week, you're going to ride the coattails of, of Watson, you bring an HPC uh, uh, and big data and big together insights, into yep. storage and analytics and flash. Those are all the disruptive factors that you, you have to push those levers, right? I do, I do, and, and that's what we're pushing. That we've, we've really rechanged the agenda to be about those things right there. All right, we'll have to end it there, but I'll give you the last word. The bumper sticker, pulling away from, from Las Vegas as you go on to your next show, your next customer meeting. What's that bumper sticker say? What's the message to, to customers? I think it might be infrastructure matters. Infrastructure matters, there infrastructure you go. Matters. Thank you, Tom. All right. Appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Thanks, All right, Dave. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from IBM Edge in Las Vegas.